Welcome to the first episode of the Feeny Call for September, as this is getting released on September 1st. And uh, tonight we have another rookie. Um, even though rookie month's technically over by the time this releases, um, we recorded this technically in rookie month, so uh, we're going to just continue rookie month for one more episode, um, oddly enough. And... Um, Tonight's guest will be Keaton Pipe from the Ontario Legend Series. Um, he's been running with the JDC group with Jeff Jeremy and stuff like that. We'll uh, get to talking to him in a bit. Uh, we're going to do our normal uh, race review. Um, we had the Superstock out after breaking a set of gears last week. Um, we won our first heat race. We were able to get around Paul uh, Bounty. It was a it was a hard pass to do, freaking passed him on the outside, and uh, was able to pull away enough that I was able to get another heat win, bring my total of heat wins up this year to six. Um, yeah, um, second uh, heat, we were still battling a loose condition, uh, just a little too much throttle coming off the corner, that's issue on my end i'm just trying to fix it inside the car but sometimes it's really hard to change your drivers driving style and try to get better and um so a feature we started on the pole we battled with miles tyson for five or six laps uh finally cleared him um pulled away a little bit and then garrett caught up to us and i wasn't defending super hard i was still running where i would normally run um, and then eventually he got a good enough run that uh, he got underneath us and uh, yeah we fell back to about fourth because once I got shoved up the high side I just I couldn't maintain anymore uh, finished fourth uh, this feature so I think that pretty much locks me in third place for points as long as I show up next week and uh, yeah so there's a chance that we podium both both cars this season so I'm going to say that's not a horrible uh, season uh, we're going to be at the Allen Lincoln Memorial as long as the car survives next weekend uh, plus Peter Ross Speedway on Saturday um, plus we might be at the Impact Motorsports Demo Cross on Thursday so uh, we shall see how it goes and uh yeah, that's pretty much a boring update for what my racing is right now. Um, but without further ado, we're going to introduce you to Keaton Pipe. All right, welcoming this week's guest, we have Keaton Pipe. Uh, we're going to give you a few minutes here to introduce yourself to the fans here, Keaton. Uh, hi, my name is Keaton Pipe. Um, I'm 13 years old, and uh, I drive a legend car for JDC Motorsports. So, you drive legend cars now. I heard you got into racing through the karting world. I'm assuming that's the trophies that are above your head there. Yeah, yeah. Those so, are not easy. Winning is never easy. Trust me. The, no, the, no. Every time you move up, it's going to get harder to win. So, yeah. how long were you in karting for? Um, well, I was in karting for seven years. And um, I did three years of a ride and drive and three years of a club karting doing like Mika and track competing at like the regional and like you know this the normal level so what was the uh the motivation to move into oval track racing because i know a lot of kart racers try to get into like the road course style racing well my dream is you know to be a nascar driver and um yeah so when i was young my dad uh he turned on a nascar race and at that time, I loved Lightning McQueen. It was like, you know, a cartoon uh, NASCAR. And my dad turned on a NASCAR race, and uh, he said, hey, look, you know, it's it's real uh, Lightning McQueen. And um, I, I watched the whole race, and I, I loved it. And um, I picked my favorite driver then, and uh, it was the same one ever since, Joey Logano. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can tell by all the posters on the wall that your favorite driver is uh, Joey Logano or anything behind you. <laughs> So, yeah. so we waited a little bit to start this. Which Logano car did you just win in the auction? 
Um, it's a pretty old one. It was um 2014, uh, Chase for the Cup, um, diecast. So was that a Penske car when he was in the? Yeah, he was in Penske. Yeah. I think it was like the second year he was in Penske. Yeah. So do you have any of the Joe Gibbs Logano cars or just? I have uh... one. I do have one. It's not the one that he flipped at Dover, is it? I know. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So I found. So I, you went to my diecast place in Oshawa, I heard. Yeah. So did did you see the Tony Stewart wrecked car that was in the cabinet? I did. Yes, I did. He had the the uh, Logano one too. That's the one I picked up before I went back and picked it up. I was going to buy it because he had it on for like forty bucks. But uh, wow. um, so. You're in the legend cars now. You're Brace Noble Track. You're showing some pretty good improvements since I seen you the first part of the year. Why don't you explain to people what the difference between go driving your go kart is and the uh, bigger legend car? Um. Well, the jump to like carts and cars are uh, is huge. See, it's a whole new like world you're going in, and like in, in my case, karting is on like road course, and I wanted to do ovals, so it's even another bigger change. But yeah, it's um carding. It handled it handled like handled really easily. But with the legend car, you gotta kind of like learn it. But so I drove legend cars very briefly. Um, I'm I'm kind of tall and fat to fit in legend cars properly. So I uh I love driving the legend cars though because they are very challenging. They uh they're yeah. really hard to drive fast because they yeah. get really twitchy. Yes. And Jeff was actually one of the guys that was helping me out when I had my own legend car. He oh, nice. gave me, yeah, he gave me a set of tires and stuff like that to, to run when we're having our tire shorts and stuff like that. So who are some of the guys that you get a race against or girls that you get a race against? I'm not sure if there's any in the uh, legend series there that you enjoy racing with or like who that you want to like try to catch up to. Um, well, I, I look up to Dawson, uh, my teammate. Yeah, he's um he's really good. <laughs> I think he uh he won the previous race. So yeah, <laughs> shout out to him. <laughs> um yeah, he's um I look up to him a lot and my other team up my teammate um Caleb, uh, I look up to him too. They've been uh doing legends for um a long time. So there many people have said they're a good team. Yeah, yeah the uh JDC uh, legend car team has been pretty stout since I've known about legend cars. Um, I think you kind of have your tier system where they're the top tier team, just like Canadian legend cars are. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'd prefer the JDC team because while well, their their cars are a little bit brighter, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've never been a fan of black cars like for the racetrack and stuff like that. It's just I've always liked cars that pop or. Yeah. No, it's we race at night most of the time, right? So, oh, yeah, so you can't see it that well. So, I don't know if you have this issue. Like, uh, I have this issue of a black car spins out, and depending where you're on the track, you can't see them till it's too late, right? Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. So, just me personally, I, I like having a bright car or a white car just because, well, people can see me and not hit me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, as you get used to legend cars and stuff like that, you get faster and more equated with the oval track style of racing. What classes would you like to move up to to like slowly work your way up the ladder? Um, I definitely want to, you know, do a late model. Yeah, a lot of a lot, that's a it's kind of like the step below NASCAR, kind of. But yeah, those are uh, they're like NASCARs basically. But yeah, I find them really cool, really fast. So, see, with me right now is I'm still looking for a new home for next year for what class I'm going to run. Um, I think I want to do more extended existed events, and I'm torn between doing, like, an open-wheel modified. Um, I've done late model before. I'm not sure if I want to go back to late model as it is expensive. And I've also been torn with the OSS series, which is basically older pit these cars, and you're still doing 100-lap events and stuff like that. Yeah, I see you got it on your hat. <laughs> Yeah, the, I've been wearing this hat now for a few weeks. It's almost time to change it out. I go through hats like faster than anything, especially because I work as a mechanic, so they get greasy and dirty. And Yeah, I've had the same hat for like multiple years since a Joey has. We need to get you working on cars more then, brother. <laughs> so 
what are some of your goals that you've had set for your rookie year in legend cars? Um, one of my major goals was like trying to not get lapped. Yeah, that was, um, I, I've achieved that goal. I think it was not that long ago, actually, but yeah, not getting lapped was definitely a big goal. And a lot of people did agree with me. And if somebody could come into the legend car series, like, as you see, um, I don't know if you see the Facebook news of like Chris Lawrence with his bone stock putting in J.R. Patrick in a bone stock, Sean Chenoweth, a bunch of big names. Um, if somebody was to come join the Legend Car Series, who is someone you'd love to race against in a Legend Car? Um, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Can it be like a famous person? It can be whoever you want, brother. I guess Joey Logano. Well, Joey used to run Legend Cars too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. So he he ran, what was it, quarter midgets, I think it was. He started there, and then he went to Legend Cars. And then, what was it, he went to Sportsman's and Late Models and stuff. Like that. I, I don't really know Joey's career too much. Because I know he got into NASCAR pretty young. And, well, when you get the name Sliced Bread from Mark Martin, I think. Uh, yeah. So, like, have you ever, like, messaged Joey Logano? Like, send him a picture of your race cars? Be like, Sit there and bug him, be like, you may be sliced bread, but like, I'm an everything bagel or something like that. <laughs> a little bit better. I do like everything bagels, but um, I haven't like sent him a picture of my car. But when his uh son was born, um, my family like sent him um a few uh like baby toys for baby Hudson, and um, I got like a letter from him, him and his wife Brittany saying thank that's, you. That's pretty cool, yeah. So did they like send you pictures of like them playing with the toys or stuff like that? No, they didn't. They sent me a card, but right. he signed it too. That's, is that like up behind you there in your Joey Logano wall? Yeah, it is. I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but you want me to go get it? Yeah, you can if you want. All right. <laughs> it's right here. It's just a kind of basic card, but on the inside. Can I read it out? Yeah, go ahead. All right, says Keaton. Thank you for thank you, thank you so much for Baby Hudson's artwork, letter, and all his cool books. Hope you'll be watching the Daytona 500, and hopefully, me, Joey, and Hudson can meet you again soon. With love, Brittany and Joey, and then he signed it. So, have you been to any of the NASCAR races in the the states, or? Um, yeah. Um, not. I think. Around a month ago, I went to Pocono and watched the Pocono race. So, have you got to meet Joey in person, or I haven't. No, right. but yeah, I've gone to when I was little. I went to a few like Mich Michigan practices because I don't think I could have like you know done a full race when because I, I was young. But yeah, I've been to a few Pocono races too. Don't worry. Wait till you like get old enough where you try to stay up for the whole twenty four hours of Daytona and watch it, <laughs> and then realize that like you could just watch the replays later. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I've done it twice. Um, the year Jimmy Johnson was running, um, with the prototype team, I think he had uh, Helio Castro Neves and stuff on his team on the forty eight Ally Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. And the first one I actually watched was the two thousand one. Um. Rolex with uh, Dale Senior and Dale Junior in the three Corvette. That's cool. So you've you've accomplished a couple of your goals already in Legend Cars, and you said you want to get into late models and stuff like that. Is there and NASCARs? Is there like other divisions that you would like to like try before you get in like possibly into a NASCAR division to build your experience bank? Or is... um, I find dirt cars they're like pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember the series name, but yeah, I definitely want to try a dirt car. Is it pretty cool? Is it like the ones with the big wings, or is it like a? It's not a sprint car, no. It's just okay. it's a car made for like dirt and stuff. Because I know like Kyle Larson, he like he did a lot of dirt, and look at him now. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of these dirt drivers are making their way up because you have who's in the Cup Series now as a dirt driver. So you have Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe, uh, Christopher Bell, um, Ricky Stenhouse, Alex Bowman. These are all dirt track drivers. There's a lot more too. Like, 
Um, yeah. Especially if you include like guys like Ryan Newman and stuff that have driven dirt cars. So if there's a chance where like, say NASCAR comes up to Canada in the next few years, which they're trying to get talks and stuff like that. And they're doing, so you have like the cup series, but they have like a filler show to say, so I know in Quebec, they had the legend cars on the road course. If they had the NASCAR event, well, could you convince mom and dad to get you to get the legend car out there so you can go race yeah. there? Or... So, what would it mean to you to be able to like race in front of your idols? Um, it'd be quite nerve wracking, but it'd be pretty awesome as well. Maybe hope Pens Roger Penske's there, you know, sign you a young contract. Yeah, yeah. So, what goals do you have to finish the season out in the legend car? And then what are you looking forward to uh, next season as well? Um, well, my goals, um, I'm trying to crack top 10. I'm, uh, I'm getting close, but I know it's reachable by the end of the season. Um, we have future goals, um, you know, then top five and, you know, maybe even a few years then. I'll hopefully get a win. A win would be nice. I was going to say that those legend guys, they're very hard to win against. I don't even have a yeah. heat win against those guys. I tried pretty hard. Um, there's a video from Stronco when he first started about Sunset. Um, we were like three, four wide, and every time we got a restart, I'd take out, and and then Parker caught me one time, and then he spun, and then, yeah, I, I think I lost by like two laps. I, I was short for winning a heat race in that class, but. Like I said, I love those cars. They're so they're probably one of the most fun cars to drive. Um, yeah, once you get the hang of them, yeah. Well, I so I don't know if you do it, but I have like a really like this steering wheel I have for i racing is the biggest steering wheel I own. My super stock steering wheel, my mini stock wheel, and all that stuff, and everything I drove for legend cars is a thirteen inch wheel. So like I found it was like so like I could just sit there and turn like this. Where if it's a big wheel, it's more like this, right? Yeah. So, I, I find that it calms down me overturning cars a bit. So, have you started, like, learning to do, like, setup stuff in, on the cars, or is Jeff taking care of most of that for you? Uh, yeah, Jeff Jeff does a good job on, you know, doing, tuning up the cars and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I haven't, I don't have too much knowledge about that, but I'm hopefully, hopefully gonna, you know, get some of that soon. <laughs> Well, as time progresses, you'll get more in the shop and help out yeah. more and stuff like that. So, we what's it? A, what's it like? A, no, you go, ahead. go ahead. You go ahead. You finish. Your All answer. right. They have a thing in like high school, and you can do like the automotive thing. So, I'm gonna do that in grade ten. So, so, yeah. So I know Andrew McFadden, who's uh Cole McFadden, is part of the Legend Car series. I know they do uh, chassis building and stuff like that in his shop class up in what is he Woodbridge? But yeah, he he's they built bumpers for race cars and stuff like that as part of the shop program. Um, so hopefully you can get maybe uh, your shop to let you build some free bumpers and stuff like that. Um, so what's it like running with the uh, JDC Motorsports? Because you're coming in as a rookie, like, what's it like? Are they being helpful? Like, are they, yeah, like... they're very welcoming, and they're just, yeah, a good team, as you said. Um, but, yeah, they are, uh, I'm lucky for them to take me under their wing. So, other than the guys at JDC, who are some of the mentors that you look for advice at the track from? Um, Kef Kevin is definitely one of them. You know, he uh, he gives me some advice and uh, yeah, it helps me on track definitely. So, uh, sorry, I'm playing with that loony still. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what do you see your steps in progression like to get to late model? How many years do you think that it will take you in legend cars before you think you're ready for moving up? Uh, definitely a few. Um. Yeah, probably like maybe five to six, because uh, yeah, these cars take a long time to master. So yeah, see where I I like is the super stocks because I find them a little bit more similar to a heavy car like a Pinty's car or something like that. Because 
a Pinty's car or a Cup car, stuff like that, it's 3,500 pounds. Where most late models are, say, 2,800 or less. Uh, where my Super Stock is 3,000 pounds, but we have a, a less grippy tire. So you learn a lot more, like, how to make your momentum and stuff. Like, that's where I'm struggling right now. I don't know if you've ever seen my car this year where I'm spinning tires off the corner because I have no patience. <laughs> do you, what do you find the hardest thing to do inside the car in the middle of the race? Um, hmm. I mean, turning gets uh, kind of tiring, like turning the wheel <laughs> physically. And that's coming from a guy that used to run road courses. So, like, now now you just be, like, left, left. I, I can't do road courses because I'm afraid that I'll forget what corner I'm going to. So, like, I did the Ron Fellows experience at the GT track up at Mossport. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, it, I'm sure you know the layout up there. So, I'm sitting there. We're driving, following the leader, and all of a sudden, we go down the big dip, and I'm like, oh, crap, corner five, corner five, pumping the brake pedal. I'm like, uh, I almost shot the Corvette into the gravel trap, but uh, the instructor didn't notice, so we kept going. <laughs> so, do you see yourself maybe going to get some road course experience and stuff to like maybe help your uh, career get up to like the higher series? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like road course racing. It's um, you know, from a background of karting, you know, um, yeah. I uh I did it a lot because you know, Cardi has race on all ovals, but um I train at Hit Motorsports. They're like a simulator um uh, a simulator studio, and um yeah like I train on different types of cars and tracks. You know I can you can do like anyone. So, so that what, helped me. What was the name of that place? A uh, Hit Motorsports. Hit Motorsports. When where is that? Um near Ajax. So, like, do they do it through, like, iRacing simulators, or do they yeah, have Yeah, iRacing, or... Assetto Corsa, yeah. See, I've never played Assetto Corsa. I play iRacing way too much in the wintertime. Uh, I'm part of, like, six leagues or something like that. I'm, wow. I think I'm supposed to be racing tonight, but I forgot. <laughs> um, So, what classes would you like to see yourself running, like, the road courses and stuff like that? Uh, do you see, like, a GT car, or do you see, like, just doing like a trump car series to learn learn what you need to do or um gt cars are pretty cool yeah i like gt3s and stuff so i'm not very familiar with road course racing i think you're a little bit more familiar than i am i mean I, I just did karting so. <laughs> but you watch road course racing and stuff like that i assume right do you I'm watch bit, like yeah. do you watch like formula 1 and stuff too or just like the nascar stuff yeah just really nascar all right, so you're like me. You watch the road course race from TV and be like, all right. What do you think of uh, Shane Van Gisberg and coming from the uh, Australian Supercars? Yeah, they say it's like one of the greatest debuts of all time. Well, he's, I think, one of the very few that went, even though he raced at Indianapolis, he went one for one, which I think there's only like two drivers in the history of NASCAR to ever do that. Yeah. Um, but what I think is, like, I love watching the Australian supercars. They yeah. are some of the, the... Hardest, like, things well, to drive? It's not even that. It's just the competition is so fierce. And it's very European style of racing. Like, there's no bump and run and stuff like that. Like, they're allowed to door very bang clean. a little bit. But it's just, they're literally not allowed to, like, hit bumper to bumper. Like, that's against the rules. So there's no, like, bump and run what you see in the late models and stuff like that. So it's like, you see these guys, and, like, they come over with so much more experience. And NASCAR and supercars are kind of getting very similar. Um, So before you, uh, like you said, you have goals to get up to, like, the Cup Series and stuff like that. Do you see yourself uh, trying to get some, like, Pinty's race starts in there before you go up? or? Yeah, I mean, since I'm Canadian, yeah, it would be good to have, you know, some Pinty's you know, Canadian NASCAR behind me. So if you got to drive for a Pinty's team and you could pick any of the Pinty's teams that you know of right now, which team would you like to drive for? Um, I'm not too familiar with the um, Pinty's teams, but I know um, the number uh, 47 is pretty good. 47? The WeatherTech one? The WeatherTech Oh, LP Dumoulin, which is Dumoulin yeah. Competition, I, I think, think so. it is. 
Cam Harris is going to have to correct me on my pronunciation of that because he does their PR and stuff. See, for me, the one person I would love to drive for, there's two. Wow, well, yeah, two, so I'm going to be picky. So I, I like underdog teams. That's just the way I've always been. So I love to drive for, like, a Larry Jackson, who uh, is the 84 uh, Dodge Challenger. Um, he's like a black and green car. I don't know if you've seen it. And then maybe, maybe. the other person is uh, I'd love to drive for DJ Kennington. Uh, oh, he's, yeah. he's always had some good good cars and he's solid and consistent and ever seeing seeing him make the 500 I think it was six years ago now in the 96 car so what what's your favorite NASCAR track um well I play NASCAR heat quite a bit um I like Las Vegas a lot it are sounds- you playing the old configuration or the new one um, it's NASCAR E5, so it's fairly new. All right, so it'll be the new configuration. So I like Las Vegas when it was flatter, because I, I even on the NASCAR games, I like like Martinsville or New Hampshire and stuff like that. Now we're on iRacing, racing. I completely suck at New Hampshire. And I do better at like a, uh, I I do better at like super speedways and stuff like that. It's because I don't have to worry about wrecking the car. Um. <laughs> So I'm going to give you a few minutes here. So I want you to go through and I want you to thank the sponsors that are helping you out. And I want you to list uh, your social medias and stuff like that so where people can find you. Well, my title sponsor is um, Element Canada. They sell like fire extinguishers and stuff. It's really cool to check them out. Um, Hit Motorsports, where I train at. Safe Auto, um, Carbonio, and Tara Marketing, Sark Realty. Canada Cone, Infinite Motorsports, and Restyle It. All right, so then what about your social medias and stuff where uh, people can find you? Uh, you can find me on, like, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at, uh, at Keen Pipe Racing. So, and then we were talking, while well, I was talking with your mom earlier, that you guys are going to be doing a giveaway with the podcast. So why don't we go through and you can talk about that? Well, the prize is um, a Colonel's Popcorn Prize Pack. I have a fundraising um, partnership with Colonels, and um, the question that's um, that you need to answer is um, how many Element Fire Extinguisher decals are on my Legend Car? All right. So I ho- I'll try to see if I can find a picture or a couple pictures of your car that I can include. So maybe people can try to do like the guess the jar and count them. But so I've also noticed in your career you've done. Uh, something that's I've done through like stuff like that. So like I used to raise money for the Make Wish Foundation with my derby cars and stuff like that. So I seen uh, that you were doing a bunch of different charity works. So why don't you go through like where you started in karting and stuff like that? So some of the charity things that you've done over the years. Um, well, I like helping people. Um, yeah, I like to use my racing platform to help others. Um, yeah, I have a. Uh... I've, this year, I've raised um, $1,300 for a lap for MD. It's like a fundraiser for muscular dystrophy. And um, every fall, I uh, host a food drive. Um, it's the week before Thanksgiving. And uh, this week, this year, it will be uh, hosted at um, Autumn Colors at Peterborough Speedway. So why don't you go through about how people that are coming to Autumn Colors, because I'll be doing an outro because I'm running a sponsorship for four classes i'm running lap sponsorships so why don't you get go through how people can help uh donate to your food drive um well they can bring in like non-perishable food items um and cash donations are also accepted okay so just bring them to like your trailer and stuff like that or yeah you can do anything you know like cans and stuff no no i mean Um, like they can just bring them to like the jdc trailer and they can donate them are you going to be also like going around and like maybe picking up like through the? So, have you ever been to Autumn Colors before? Uh, nope. Oh, you are in for one long, long weekend. the The hardest part about Autumn Colors is waiting. So, I found out I've been running Autumn Colors for nine years now. If you have one car, you run one heat race on Friday. And then I think you guys have a non-winners race on Friday as well. Yeah. Um, 
I participated in that one year. I got second in it, I think. That's when that car caught fire with one lap to go when he was leading. Um, yeah, that was the uh, F, not the FZ09, the uh, 1250 FJ engine, the uh, ticking time bomb engine. Um, so yeah, you have that one, but because there's so many classes there, it's waiting, and like you sit there and we all get nervous in our cars and stuff like that. Like, I still get nervous jumping into mine. I do too. Like, it's weird because, like, in the super stock, I'm calmer than the mini stock. It's because it's uh, bigger. It's not even because it's bigger. It's easier to drive. So sure. the super stock has power steering. I have a fan blowing cold air on me. I'm kind of spoiled in that car. <laughs> and it's a really good car. And the mini stock has no power steering, no fan. It's way hotter in there. And, like, it's way sketchier. Like, it reminds me of driving a Legend because I don't know if you've seen the pictures of that car this year where I'm carrying the left rear tire up in the air most of the time. But, yeah, it's it's a really weird car to drive. And I've almost flipped it twice this year. I think that's why I'm nervous is because all of a sudden the left rear picks up and they'll hit the, like, left front on the curb and it'll be like, uh-oh. <laughs> So, what is, like, one of the scariest moments you've had in the cars so far, or the carts? Um, luckily, I haven't been in too many, um, I haven't been in a crash yet, but, um, on my second race, I was still, like, learning the car, and, you know, and, uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I thought I was losing power, but it, it ended up that I was in the wrong gear. I was in fifth. Did, and, Jeff, um, did Jeff put a shift indicator in there for you? Uh, No. But yeah, I uh, I kind of ran a lot of the race in fifth until I got kind of like knocked off or something, and and I kind of went into the grass. I didn't really spin out, but kind of parked it in the grass. Yeah, so that was my hardest thing about the legend cars because it's a five speed transmission. First is forward, and yeah. then everything's down. But the problem is between first and second is neutral, and it's so hard to find neutral and get that light to light up. I eventually yeah. made it where I didn't have to have it in neutral to start the car. I just pushed the clutch and fired it up. But yeah, it was so hard finding neutral because I ran... So say everybody was running 390s or 373s in the uh, 1250 cars. I ran 333s and that meant I had to be in a different gear than the entire field. <laughs> so it was just... Yeah, they're fun to drive. Maybe I'll find one to hop in for the non-winners race or something like that if they let me. Maybe Jeff will let me drive one of uh, his cars. <laughs> so, I'm going to let you go for the night. Thank right. you for joining us. Is there anyone else thank that you, you want to thank? Me. Is there anyone else you want to thank or uh, add before we end this up? Uh, my family and uh, JDC Motorsports. All right. I want you to have a good night, and hopefully your new Logano car gets here soon, and I expect to see it on that shelf. <laughs> you okay. Um, so that was Keaton Pipe. Um, thankful for him joining us this week. Um, not going to do much of an outro this week. Um, mainly because it's been a busy week. I've had a lot of stuff to do. Um, championship clash at Peterborough Speedway this week. Um, September 2nd, I think it is, the Saturday. Um, all the points championships will be decided. We are tight on points for almost every class that is going on Saturday. Um, many stocks top fives are still mathematically have a shot. Uh, the super stocks, I think, within a couple points. Uh, the trucks are tied at first. Um, it's going to be a great night of racing. Um, I suggest you show up to Peter Rose Speedway and watch and see who the champions are going to be. Um, other than that, I'm still selling the Autumn Colors laps and sponsorships and stuff like that, trying to uh, gain a few more to help racers and stuff like that. I'm going to get a little bit more into selling. Uh, also, uh, Orno Democross. Uh, I think I'm going to run Thursday. If Cars by Thursday, I might run it Sunday as well. Um, so if you like the Demolition Derby and stuff like that, Demo Cross has always been one of my favorite events since it started. Uh, oval racing with jumps and full contact. So 
Um, I'm not going to, like I said, run too much of a long-winded outro here. Um, so if you're looking at follow, finding us racing, is so Saturday. We were supposed to be at Peterborough Speedway. Friday, we might be down in Delaware watching, helping. Uh, I told Chris Lawrence, if I can afford it, I'll go down. Um, yeah, so that. And then Sunday, we're supposed to be at Sunset Speedway. Uh, for the Alan Lincoln Memorial or Cup or however we're calling it. Uh, Alan unfortunately passed away. Frank Davies passed away. Um, some good guys. Uh, Monday, I don't think we have any races. And then I said Thursday, Demo Cross. Friday, once again, I might go down to Delaware, help out uh, Chris and stuff like that. Chris is trying to get me in a car, I think. Um... I just don't feel comfortable driving someone's stuff most of the time. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week for episode 17. I think we already have a guest lined up. I'm not going to tell you it is till I confirm, but uh, hope you guys have a great week and uh, see you at the racetrack this weekend.